Happy holidays, everybody, wherever you may be as you join us this afternoon. Take in one of the best rivalries in college basketball. You are watching the ACC on ESPN, and this is a non-conference game. Louisville out of the ACC, and of course, their arch rivals, Kentucky out of the SEC. Throw out the records when these two get together. Yes, Kentucky is only one in five as they take on the Cardinals of the KFC Yum Center here this afternoon. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman in Toronto. Dick Vitale in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Happy holidays to you and yours. Very excited to bring you this game today. And Dickie V, you say this is must win for the Cats, right? Well, you don't have to go to Harvard to figure it out. If you're one in five and your goal is to get in the NCAA March Madness Tournament, which is Kentucky's goal, they need some Ws. And this is a big one for them because they only play two non-conference teams. Yet when they got Louisville and Texas, who are really, you know, teams that will give you a little respect. Plus, they need it psychologically. Also, when you look at the SEC, there's only two teams rated nationally out of the SEC, so you're not going to get many opportunities. So any way you cut it, one in five, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. You need some W's, and they need a win badly here today. Ready to go before about 3,000 fans, 15% capacity of the Yum Center at Louisville. One change in the expected starting lineup for Kentucky. Terrence Clark, who's been nursing a sore ankle the last couple of weeks, is not in the starting lineup. So you've got Devin Askew back in the starting lineup, along with Davion Mintz in the back corner. We'll see what kind of a start Kentucky gets off to, Dick. As you know, 1-5 and five beat Moorhead State in their opener. Since then, they've lost to Richmond, Kansas, Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, and North Carolina in desperate need of a victory here this afternoon. Well, you know, Dan, you don't have to really, when you study the stats, it's very simply to see why they've lost five in a row, turning the ball over and having a tough time shooting the three as they come up empty there. And you turn the ball over and you don't shoot well. I mean, that is a formula for losing. As for Louisville, they've got Carleek Jones back, his second game back off COVID protocols. He was not in the lineup in their lopsided loss to Wisconsin. He did return in the win over Pitt as the Cardinals strike with the first bucket of the game. It'll be Samuel Williamson coming off a really good effort against Pittsburgh, a double-double with 14 points and 12 rebounds. Nice runner there by Devin Askew, who did, even though he hasn't started the last couple of games, has been playing a little bit better. He had a nice outing against North Carolina. Yeah, he really played well off the bench against North Carolina. They started off Kentucky with a little zone defense. Louisville and home white, Kentucky in visiting blue. Kentucky 37 and 16 all time against Louisville, including a win in overtime last year at Rupp. And a back and down his man and drawing the foul, David Johnson, the sophomore guard for Louisville. A casually attired John Calipari here in the holiday season. And we had a chance to talk to him on the phone yesterday, Dick. And he said he wants his players to have fun. He wants to empower them. He wants to turn more things over to them in the game and let them figure things out as a unit. Well, he really he was very you know, optimistic about the future. Even though they're one in five, he really feels confident that they're going to go on a run. And I'll tell you one thing about him. John Calipari, you talk about a guy that eats, sleeps, and drinks the game. He does. And he's been in situations like this before and has had a way of rallying his players. Meanwhile, for Louisville, third year as the head coach of the Cardinals, Chris Mack, after a very successful stint at Xavier. We had a chance to Zoom with Coach Mack yesterday, and he's fired up for this game, Dick. We talked to him about it, and he said he feels they should have won in Lexington last year, and he's, you know, nobody's feeling sorry for anybody else right now. He's thinking about his team at 5-1, and one, even though they've had injuries, even though they've had COVID issues and went on a pause for about 16 days. He wants this one badly as well. Yeah, he really does. He said, you know, it's important to us as well. We want this win. It's on our floor. I mean, there was a lot of talk earlier this year. He wanted to play the game on a neutral. Calipari said, no, no, no. And the reason he wanted to do that because of COVID-19, eliminating a chance to have a packed house here at uh, Louisville. There's Eight on the shot right clock now. right now for the Cardinals. And Dre Davis with a three not there, but a long rebound tipped out to him. But he can't handle it, and it's Kentucky ball. I think one of the reasons you've seen some zone early is they want to make sure 
Czar stays on the floor, and here's he gets himself in foul trouble. That's been a problem for Kentucky. Yeah, he's already got one, and Isaiah Jackson's already got one. So that is something to keep an eye on. They both fouled out in the loss to Carolina in Kentucky's last game. And many of them are silly fouls, really are. I think the kids have a real tough time many of them playing that man-to-man -man defense, especially the young guys uh, high school. Now, Czar's been a guy around the block, started of Wake Forest. Many of us Maybe thought when he came here that he was the answer for them down in that post, and it has not been there. No, didn't score, didn't even, a, didn't attempt a field goal, rather. Only scored two points in the loss to Carolina. A Louisville turnover, and it's been a concern for the Cardinals as well. Not as big a concern as Kentucky's had with the turnovers. There's Saar with a good look. A little bit strong, and the rebound down to Johnson. And Louisville just looking like a more complete team with both Johnson and Jones in the lineup at the same time. A good look for a straight-on three for Williamson, but it won't go down. Yeah, that backcourt is really a backcourt that knows how to play. If you look, Jones has really been an impact play. That's big for Kentucky. Making that three-point shot is big. Devin Askew knocks it down, his fifth three of the season. Kentucky came into the game shooting only 24% as a team from three-point range, one of the lowest percentages in Division I. Well, the five-game losing streak, they shot 39%, 3.21.8, turnover 17 a game. I mean, you do that, you're really going to go to the loser's locker room. If you haven't seen Louisville, keep an eye on number one, Carly Jones, as Johnson buries the three, the assist to Jones. Johnson, a sophomore from Louisville. Jones, a grad transfer from Radford, the big South player of the year last year. The only player in the country to average better than 20 points, five rebounds, and five assists per game. And Dick, in the early going, he's been one of the best players in the ACC as well. Yeah, he's Mr. Versatility. He's very versatile. He has stepped in and lived up to the expectations. ESPN had him rated as the number one impact fifth-year player. And I thought when Czar decided and he was the player eligible, he would be number one. But right now, he has not played to that kind of a reputation. Czar with a turnover. Davis misses the long jumper and a strong rebound by Jackson, another one of the freshmen for Kentucky. He's out of Pontiac, Michigan. The runner in the lane way short for Davion Mintz. The grad transfer from Creighton, the guy who started about 80 games in his career with the Blue Jays. Yeah, he had an injury, though. Didn't play the last season. Yep. Sat out of Kentucky. And they need his outside shooting. He can do that. Davis tries to thread the needle, and another turnover committed by Louisville. Yeah, that'll drive coaches crazy. And these two coaches really concerned about the turnover situation. That three well short by Brandon Boston Jr. And now a chance to run for Trey Davis and he'll land in. Well, Davis went right by him. And there's mandatory defense right here. That's been an Achilles heel, as Al McGuire would say, in terms of shooting the trifecta for Kentucky. Shot selection's been a problem. Is out on the floor. First media timeout of the afternoon. Carly Jones and the Louisville Cardinals with an early three-point lead on the Cats. Well, it's the first time in 94 years that the Kentucky Wildcats start a season one and five. A big problem, Dick alluded to this earlier, the turnovers in the five-game losing streak. Get this, they've got 51 assists and 85 turnovers. Overall, 69 assists, 100 turnovers. The only win was against Moorhead State. Now, they did play a great second half against Notre Dame, and they did play a good first half against North Carolina. But at the end of the day, as Coach Cal told us yesterday, Dick, they are what their record says they are, and they got to find a way to get some wins. Well, he sounded like Bill Parcells used to talk back, and they need some W's. And the one thing he said, you know, playing tough people now, we got to get some W's badly. You know, think about this, though, offensively. They've been held under 65 points five straight games. Last year, they were only under 65 one time, and that was a loss to Evansville and a shocking loss. Terrence Clark, who did not start the game for Kentucky because of the bad ankle, is in the game off the bench and an impressive drive and a finish there for Davion Mintz with a chance for a three-point play. As we get a chance to tell you, we've got an American Conference doubleheader coming your way Tuesday on ESPN2 and also streaming live on the ESPN app. It'll be South Florida taking on Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers at 7 Eastern. And then former Kansas Jayhawk Quentin Grimes leads Houston against the Golden Hurricane, who have won three, sta three straight. An AAC doubleheader Tuesday night. Hey, one thing, keep an eye on Houston. They're legitimate. 
You know, one thing about Coach Sampson, he knows how to win. And Grimes has been terrific for that down, as you mentioned, from Kansas. Johnson with Jacob Toppin on him. Toppin, the younger brother of Obi Toppin, and a guy, Dick, who's been getting more playing time the last couple of games. One of the reasons is Kentucky's a man down. Cameron Fletcher not with the team right now. Suspended. They do hope he's going to return, but John Calipari said he had to be away from the team. He had to work on some things, and it sounds like, you know, attitude, being a good teammate. Uh, selflessness, those sorts of things, and Coach Cal said that he has had a talk with Fletcher, with Fletcher's mom, and with Fletcher's high school coach, and they do hope that he is going to be a part of the program again going forward. You know what it is, a kid like that comes there, he's frustrated, frustrated over lack of playing time, and that's the one thing you got to understand when you go to Kentucky, they're going to have players, they're going to have people to compete with, and you know, John Calabria, like many coaches, if you prove in practice you can play and can help the team, you're going to play. He wants to win as bad as anyone. So the bottom line is you prove it every day in your work ethic and what you do on a daily basis in practice. Lance Ware, 6'9", freshman out of Camden, New Jersey, knocks down a couple of free throws for Kentucky. The Wildcats back on top by one in the early going to the KFC Yum Center. You know, Ware gives him some physical presence on the interior, limited offensively, but he's very tough, tenacious kind of player. Part of that recruiting class rated number one in America. Jones from the free throw line, in and out, and a good rebound in traffic by Toppin. Toppin gives him great legs. He can get up to the floor, man. He can really get up. A little out of Mintz. control right there on the drop. Yeah, yeah, Mintz trying to go coast to coast. Five on four for the Cardinals, and it'll pay off with a Josh Nickelberry three. Second game back from, a, from recovering from knee surgery. The sophomore out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, not shy into the game and draining a three. Well, that's one of his strengths. Chris told us yesterday, Coach Mack, that he could shoot the ball, give him some yeah, offense. Top of yeah, that's a big time turnaround in the post there from Toppin to tie the game at 11 as both teams start to get into a better offensive rhythm now. Well, he'll get some play in time. There's no doubt about it. His brother was unbelievable at Dayton last year. Hey, Nickelberry's not shy, is he, Dick? He's been in the game no. about 30 seconds. He's touched it twice. He's shot it twice. <laughs> He's my kind of guy, man. He's my <laughs> kind of guy. He doesn't want to be big man on campus. you got to score. He does give Louisville more depth. Again, they've had a number of injuries. Samuel Williamson missed a couple of games. Nickelberry just back. Well, Malik uh, Williams. Jones. Yep. And, yes, yeah, still without Malik Williams, who would be their starting five. He's out probably until at least late January after a broken bone in his foot and Jacob Toppin making the most of the increase in playing time. You know, he's a kid that's going to get better and better because he's got things you can't teach. His athleticism, his quickness, and he's got to refine his game in terms of his skills. This should help him a little bit right here, this early start he's had. Of course, Jacob, the younger brother of Obi Toppin, the former outstanding player at Dayton, current member of the New York Knicks. Toppin transferring from Rhode Island. He's a sophomore. Jones threw all kinds of traffic, and he turned it over. Kentucky leading by two. The Wildcats getting a spark off the bench from Jacob Toppin to take the lead. Yeah, Mr. Toppin really giving him some productivity, baby. Shocker's going to come on. And he came back and said, I do too. Hey, every <laughs> count going to name out. They're capable of having a great game. But Alabama on paper, and look at their roster. Look at the NFL guys, first round. There's so much talent. Hey, you know, we mentioned Louisville. Playing without Malik Williams, 6'11", would be the best defensive player, a veteran player. Candidate last year was right up top. One of the guys for six men a year in the conference. And I'm telling you another guy, Dan, Charles Midland. When they get him back, he's instant offense. Bob Schuess and I did the game against Gonzaga last year, championship of the conference tournament, and he played great against Gonzaga. Had like about 20, and I'll tell you, he would be an instant impact offensive help for this Louisville team. Yeah, he is still out with a knee injury, so they haven't had Williams, they haven't had Midland, they were without Nickelberry until their last game, without Williamson for a couple of games, and without Carly Jones for one game, plus Dick, the whole team had to shut down for over two weeks because of COVID issues. So, yes, they are 5-1, to one, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing for Chris Mack's crew so far in the early going this season. And they got two quality wins, too. They beat a Western Kentucky team who's really pretty good with Charles Passy, and they also beat Seton Hall in a tough game.
Timeout on the floor, two-point lead, Kentucky. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, happy holidays, everybody. Kentucky and Louisville, the one in five Wildcats, the five and one Cardinals, two-point lead for the visitors, about nine minutes into the first half. The game coming to you from the KFC Yum Center. This is the last non-conference game for Louisville. They go into ACC play after this. There's another turnover. And Askew with a strong drive and a finish. And Askew's off to a terrific start today. He's got seven. Yeah, really playing well, taking advantage of the chance to start again. And they're going to a full court trap. They were trapped there and they forced the turnover. Good move by John Calipari. There's another trap. Did it make them really handle the ball? They're coming after it. This time Louisville will get it over. Johnson to Jones and a clean look at a three will go down. Carly Jones. Carly is some quality player. Did a great job, as you said earlier, Dan, when he played at Radford. Terrific play. Making big plays throughout the season thus far. And it comes into the game averaging 16 points per game, better than five and a half assists per game, and a great rebounder for a guard as well. Better than six rebounds per game. How about the work getting done by Lance Ware, who has definitely had an imprint on this game in the early going. But who learned playing, Zach? Because that really makes a guy like Calipari happy. See the aggressiveness, the way he was attacking the glass. Look at him right here. Good second effort. He stays at the ball. Goes back up strong again. Says, I'm going to score. Man, he scored right there. Hey, you know, you had the game. You and Jay had the game when they were blown out in Louisville by that Wisconsin team. And people said, oh, man. 85, what was it, 48, what's playing 37, played without Jones. I mean, let's face it, Jones a big loss, but they would still probably tend to beat Wisconsin to prove that no fluke at all, man, with that win they had at Michigan State last yeah. yesterday. They are terrific, and, and you and I were talking about this yesterday. You know, teams that are older, you know, given all the craziness and uncertainty and difficulty surrounding this season, teams who are older and knew each other before the lockdown and the whole COVID situation figured to handle this better than teams that weren't. And Wisconsin has five seniors in the starting lineup and a fifth-year senior as their first guy generally off the bench. They know exactly who they are. Yeah, and they also average about 23 years in age. Yeah. They average about 23 years in age, and that's a big plus. And they really play well together. They got Potter and uh, Trice was great yesterday against Michigan State. But they're not good just because they're old. They're good because they're good, too. I mean, the, the Big yeah, Ten yeah. is loaded right in. Wisconsin's really good on any given day. They can beat anybody. Yeah, yeah. The Big Ten from top to bottom. Look last night. Minnesota beats Iowa. Uh, Richard Petito's club's 8-1 now. The kid Marcus Carr was my player today. Knight scored 30 and did a great job. Made some big threes. They won that game in overtime over really an outstanding Iowa basketball team. You're making people up in Toronto happy, Dick, talking about Marcus Carr. Yeah, I knew he was a Toronto kid. I knew that. I knew I'd bring a smile in your face. Hey, it's Christmas, man. I want to bring some cheer to you, Mr. Schumann. Hey, that's two guys that see the same barber, by the way. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but not for long. <laughs> it doesn't take long. Three-point lead for Kentucky as both teams get a little bit sloppy right now. Kentucky's and it'll be Slazinski to inbound it. You know, Dan, Kentucky's done a better job in terms of handling the basketball. I think he's got to make John feel a lot better. There's only one thing that's going to make him feel better is leaving here with another win, which would be eight out of nine, Kentucky over Louisville in the last nine. Yeah. We talked about the good second half against Notre Dame, the good first half against Carolina. We did mention they were right there with Kansas with three minutes left in the game and only lost by three to Kansas. But at the end of the day, as you said, they got to get some Ws. Yeah, we did that game, and then we were right there. No doubt about it. Nice interior pass there from Jalen Withers to Quinn Slazinski for the bucket to make it a one-point game. The, the Slazinski did a great job getting free right there for that job. It was too easy. Slazinski actually starting three games when the Cardinals were down to about eight scholarship players coming off the bench here again this afternoon. Defense is really making them struggle here. Well, too much one on one. Too much one. It's been a problem right here. Too much one on one basketball. Shot selection. That's always a problem with young kids coming out of the high school ranks. Understanding what a quality shot is. 
And what did John Calipari say to us yesterday, Dick, that these guys have to work harder to get their teammate open, set a screen, make a cut, do something to help one of your teammates instead of just going one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you know, Cal said they got to learn how to create space for a teammate. Yeah. That's a little part of the learning process. But they do have talent. Three of their players are rated first-round draft choices. Anytime you got three players rated first-round draft choices, you got a transfer of seven foot who everybody raved about coming to school. you got a chance to win. Johnson with a three, the assist to Jones in Louisville back on top. And the one thing they got to really work hard on, we talked about it with John yesterday as well, they seem to be spurts, Dan, where they really play poorly in a spurt and allow teams to go on a run against them. They got to try to avoid that. And we aren't there, but you can hear a little bit of noise. Again, about 3,000 fans in attendance at the KFC Yum Center today for this game between Kentucky and Louisville. Nice work on the offensive glass. And the putback for Brandon Boston Jr. He is the highest ranked of all the Kentucky recruits to come in this year. He was ranked seventh on the ESPN 100 coming into the season. Yeah, he's ranked number seven right now in terms of the NBA draft. And we got to see a little bit more out of him. How about Carly Jones, Dick? He's really getting things done right now. Well, he's just a player that's got everything as you talked about earlier, Dan. His versatility, rebound, assist, score. Just a quality performer. Has lived up to the reputation of making the move going from Bradford to Louisville. Mince for three. And down with a rebound is Jones. The Cardinals looking to extend the lead on a bit of a run here. Slazinski the kick. Great shot fake. Open look and way short on the three is Jones. To turn it back over to Kentucky and take us to the next media timeout. A two-point lead for Louisville as they go back and forth at the Yum Center. It started with David Johnson banging down a three for Louisville. With it back at the other end, the Jackson drive and the Boston putback. It's a two-point game. Game will be won. Dan, Dick, back to you. All right, guys, thank you. Happy holidays to you both. Look who it is, Dick. The Hall of no. Famer, Denny Crum, is at the game today. Yeah, Denny Crum, what a classy winner he was. Look at that, 1980 and 86, he brought those two championships. The Doctors of Duck, Mr. Griffin and Company, 86. Never nervous, pervers, zealous. <laughs> Don't mention his name to Mr. Billis. Don't mention that name. I promise, Jay, I would not say that you played against pervers and they came up on a short end, the Dukies, who had a great team that year and a great year. Some of the early numbers, Kentucky just one for six from three-point range. They have cut down on the turnovers, just three so far, but notably just one assist on eight made field goals, which is a very low ratio. And again, can they get each other open and get some easy looks? Sar missing in close, and it's back over to the cards. You know, Sar's got to start scoring inside. I mean, last year he had 30-point games, 25 against teams like Notre Dame and Duke. And right now, I don't think he scored yet in this game, has he? He has not. He is scoreless today, 0 for 3 from the floor. Third team all ACC player a year ago, about 13 points per game for Wake. He must think he's back in the ACC. This is the fourth consecutive ACC opponent for Kentucky. And he's a great young guy. Everybody raves about him as a kid. But he must be a little frustrated here. Shot clock violation. No Kentucky shot clock violation right there. And Chris Mack can't be happy. The Cardinals 5-1 and one on the season. As we mentioned, in spite of all the injuries that they've had, the one loss, as you talked about, Dick, was the lopsided loss against Wisconsin. But as you said, they've beaten Western Kentucky. They beat Seton Hall. They just picked up a road win at Pitt. And they go into conference play a week from today at Boston College. You know, Coach Capel's got a real tough time down there playing without the great Champagne, big-time scorer, and Tony. Both guys were out of the lineup uh, against Louisville, and Louisville took advantage of the opportunity. Boston leans in off the back of the iron. The tip by Ware won't oh. go, and then I think Johnson tipped it into his own bucket. Yeah, he really did. Johnson tipped that ball in. Guy Nearest gets credit for the score. And that'll tie it up at 21. Miss three and down with a rebound. It is Kentucky ball. Not enough patience right there in that possession. He's got the ball a little too quick. You mentioned about no assist for Kentucky. A lot of it's off one-on-one -on -one play or off the offensive boards. 
They got to learn how to pass and create opportunities for each other. Out of bounds. Yeah, the basketball. Back in for the cards, number one, Charlie well, sometimes this will happen, Dick. You, yeah. you just try to tip it, keep it in play, and you accidentally tip it into your own basket. Unbelievable. And a couple of possessions ago, I said that was Sar who missed the shot. It was actually where Sar is on the bench right now. You know, John Calipari, who? Dick, he also, he created a leadership committee. He three players who he said wanted to take control of some of the things that he says are non-negotiable about the culture of the program. And he wouldn't say who they are, but if you read between the lines, he kind of hinted at a little bit that it would be, or yeah, older players. So guessing it could be Mintz, it could be Saar. And a guy Brooklyn! they miss is Keon Yo! Brooks. Keon Brooks has yet to play this year for the Cats because of a leg injury. Hey, one thing people take for granted what John Calipari has achieved. What he's done in Kentucky has been off the charts. By the way, he's the only coach to coach four number one overall selections. Rose, Wall, Anthony Davis, and Carl Anthony Towns. A little better ball movement here. Yeah. Ware gets a touch. Withers gambled. Ware tries to get by him, and he draws the foul. Foul lines really hurt Kentucky in some of their games. The Richmond game, which you uh, did, on the hurt a big time. Card, Withers, that's his first team four. Dallin Jordan, thank you. Yeah, Kentucky's out rebounding Louisville. They've kept the turnovers down. And the guy who's given them some and good minutes off the bench, Lance Ware, is at the free throw line for a couple now after the foul on Jalen Withers of Louisville. Yeah, you know, Weir and certainly uh, Topping has given him some productivity off the bench. That's been a plus for us. And they're not turning the ball over. The free throw line has hurt them in some of the games. Hurt them in a Richmond game big time. Richmond, a terrific team. Walked into Rupp Arena, got out there with a win. And looks like Richmond in St. Louis, Dick, will be two of the heavyweights in a very good conference, the Atlantic 10 Conference. Got some good teams. They're really good teams. Minnesota's got a win over St. Louis as well. I'm telling you, that Big 10 and the Big 12, there's no doubt in my mind those two conferences are head and shoulders right now over everyone else. The SEC only has two teams rated, Tennessee and Missouri. The, you have nobody in the top 15 in the ACC. Well, tonight we've got three more bowl games coming your way. It begins this afternoon at 3.30 Eastern time after us here on ESPN. Western Kentucky taking on Georgia State in the Lending Tree Bowl. It'll be Louisiana against Texas San Antonio on ABC, also at 3.30 Eastern time. And then later on tonight on ESPN, the Cure Bowl undefeated Coastal Carolina taking on 9-1 Liberty. Jones thought about it. The length of Toppin may have persuaded him to not take that shot, and then he turns it over only to see Johnson get it back. Shot clock didn't reset. Got to get a shot off. They do get it off in time. Can't hit it, and Williamson is out of bounds, so it's back over to Kentucky. The one thing the Kentucky kids do, and they are fighting and they are scrapping. They are really hustling big time. And if you're not going to hustle this game, I mean, this is rivalry. I mean, everything stops. I read an article, the Sea of Blue, and I read an article that says, everything stops in the state right now for this game. They don't care about the records. It's Kentucky, it's Louisville, and that's enough said. They have played every year since 1983 wow. after not playing in the regular season Kentucky forever. Basketball. Before that, of course, admitted the NCAA tournament a few times, but there are those, Dick, who feel this is the best non-conference rivalry in college basketball, and it's hard to argue that. There are those who feel this is flat out the best rivalry of any rivalry in college basketball. Uh, the Duke Carolina people certainly would get involved in that argument, though. Yes, yeah, so would I get involved. The last two shots they have taken threes have not even been close. Have not even been close. I mean, today it is tough to win without guys that can make that perimeter shot. It has become so important. You know, a lot of guys want to recruit these great athletes, runners, jumpers. Give me guys that can make shots, man. That's the name of the game in basketball. you got to make shots. Yeah, and again, Kentucky, one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country, just 24% on the season from beyond the arc. They are one of eight today. Louisville is four of 12 today, so more than half of their points have come off the three ball. 
Well, one of eight, you should like 12 and what? 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half percent. <laughs> Pretty good in my sixth grade. Pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> a little ball screwed up by top. For a tough oh, shot. Wow. And goes. Man. Chris Max says, good shot. That's a good <laughs> shot. <laughs> The Shot clock line. running down, and David Johnson with his third three of the game. Ball screwed up on top. See, right now, there's not enough ball. You got to move that basketball. That's it. Move the ball. That's a good pass right there. And a good shot, and a three ball for Maybe Mitch. The man. assist to Askew. Askew Four really having a nice first half. You know, patience, poise, let the points. The three Ps. They were very patient there. Stay with Kentucky. Kentucky good call right the there. Jeffrey. Parley says no, 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 but the referee made and a good call, Parley. That ball to the loss. I can see that here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Wow. Kentucky, a 30 second timeout. Said had it all away. Johnson said had it all away. He's coming Kentucky. out party was the game that you did, Dan, yep. with uh, against Duke. He was unbelievable against Duke last year. Yeah, took over the game in the second half down at Cameron. A Kentucky taking a 30-second timeout here late in the first half. Again, offense has been tough to come by for both teams. Louisville leading by two. A chance for us to tell you about a great way to raise money, Dick, for the V Foundation. Yeah, you know, if you get my book right now, you get an autographed copy. I'll write anything you want in here. You know, we have stories there about Kentucky, Louisville, etc. The lost season. I did it with the great Dick Hoops Weiss, how he Schwab did a lot of the research. And it's really a, a book that I love because it's helping raise money for kids battling cancer. Every dollar, Dan, as you know, that I would make is going to pediatric cancer. We have a nice check because all you beautiful people going for about 30000 is going to go out to the V Foundation. So I thank you. So if you want a copy, just go to dickvitale.com dickvitale.com because there's nothing worse man and every day all I can simply tell you this I hope and pray none of you have to feel that bottom line is think about this 45 to 50 mothers and fathers every day hear four words no mom and dad ever wants to hear your child has cancer well, we are all so grateful, Dick, for all the work that you have done over the years to raise millions of dollars as Vince knocks down another three, so he's made two in a row from beyond the arc, and Kentucky goes on top. Well, Vince can make that three. He squared his body really well, did a great job. By the way, you don't have to go to Dick Vitale online. DickVitale.com. Get an autographed copy. Mince a 35% three-point shooter in his time at Creighton. Dre Davis with a good look at the other end. And Askew down with a rebound in traffic for the Wildcats. Davis really didn't quite this game. Good young freshman player. His brother's going to be going to school there. His dad, his dad coaches at a high school level in Indianapolis. Askew, who reclassified from the class of 2021 to start college this year as an offensive foul is called on Brandon Boston Jr. And Nick, he's just been unable to get anything going here in the first half. Yeah, really struggling. He was such a big time high school player. He made the transition, went over to play at Sierra Canyon, played there, played with the great Zaire Williams, who's at Stanford, who's a tremendous talent. And they had. You know, LeBron James's son, Dwayne Wade's son, and he went there and had a great high school year. Yeah. Our guy Paul Biancardi had him ridden way up there. Jalen Withers stepping in to take the charge, and now the Cardinals can hold for the final shot of a low-scoring first half. If the Cardinals can buy time and get some wins, I'm going to tell you, Charles Midland's going to help this club big time, especially offensively. Johnson inside, Withers with a bucket, Louisville on top. As the first half comes to a close at the KFC Young Center. Not an offensive masterpiece by either team to say the least, but they're both working hard. They both want the win badly. The Cardinals did make five threes in the first half, and that's the biggest reason why they're holding on to a slender one-point lead. Time now for the Jeep Halftime Report along with Jordan Cornette. Here's Dallin Cup. CC on ESPN. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, a look at the first half stats between Kentucky and Louisville. Brought to you by Ally, and not a great offensive performance by either team, to be quite honest with you. It's just 28-27 at halftime. 
I guess maybe one thing that stands out is Louisville's made a couple more threes. Both teams low turnovers. Both teams low foul totals as well. Neither team got close to the bonus in the first half. Happy holidays again. Thanks for joining us. Dan Schulman in Toronto. Dick Vitale in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Dickie B, what stood out in the first half to you? Well, stood out to me. Czar. Where is Mr. Czar? Where's the kid I watched last year play again? 30s and 25s in the ACC. He didn't score against, you know, he scored, didn't have a field goal against North Carolina. Doesn't have a field goal here in this game. For them to win, the only chance they got to win this game is he's got to put some points on the board. He's too talented. They got to find him, but he's got to be aggressive and make move without the ball. He's got to get absolutely free. He's got to get free, and he's got to call for the rock and score. They need that big guy to start contributing. Can't always say, well, the freshman, the freshman, the freshman. He's a veteran. He's a veteran. He's got the book points in the book. Underway in the second half. Sar played 12 minutes in the first half for the Cats. 0 for 3. Did not have a rebound. Nice performances for Kentucky in the first half from Jacob Toppin and Devin Askew. And leading all scores is David Johnson of Louisville, who made three threes. He's got 10 points, the only player in double figures as we go to the second half. Well, Kentucky got some help off that bench from Toppin and also Weir. They came in, they were very productive. Jackson was very quiet in his 10 minutes that he played for Kentucky. He started off this year, he was getting rave reviews from everyone. But he's yeah. got to start getting back to that level. He's a great athlete, an elite athlete. Yeah, he didn't score either in the first half. So Saar and Jackson, neither one of them with a point in the first half for Kentucky. They're starting four and five men. And they're only down one, so that's a plus sign. Boston with a long two, won't stay down. And the rebound ripped down by Jalen Withers of Louisville. In addition to Johnson with 10, Carly Jones, seven points and four rebounds. Nobody else had more than three. Again, a low-scoring game between these two. Williamson with a runner rejected by Jackson. That's what he does best. Give it back to him for the yes. And he did. Yes. Ask you to Jackson. Well, he deserved to get it back. That's Jackson. That's what he was doing earlier this year. Great block shot. He's a tremendous shot blocker. And then he ran the lane in transition. They got it back to him. I mean, Askew's done some good things here this afternoon. And now Johnson turns it over. So Kentucky's defense coming out flying here in the second half, and they're turning it into offense at the other end. Well, I'll tell you one thing, great job defensively. And I know that's going to be a little upsetting to Chris Mack. He told us that Johnson has been around. He's can't turn the ball. Look at that block. Great block, under control. Give it back. Give it go. And up we go, up and away, Miss Isaiah Jackson, baby. And then it was Jackson starting it again. So in the second half already, Dick, Jackson's had a block, a dunk, a steal, and an assist on the bucket by Boston, who's now with the line and completes the three-point play. Now they're going to get Czar to join him. And if he joins him with Jackson on the interior, that would be a big plus. Remember, this game is absolutely a bust for Kentucky. they got to play their hearts out. Jimmy Dice was telling me during timeout, uh, during the halftime, some of the attacks, he said, they got to pour their hearts out. This game is so big for Kentucky, psychologically, emotionally. They're all a big blue nation. They're the most passionate fans. This guy pours his heart out. I mean, if they played half as hard, all the players, and put their heart and soul, a little like Calipari and his staff does, they would win those close games. They've been losing. Isaiah Jackson with another block, his second already here in the second half. And yes, Kentucky one in five for the first time in almost a century. Heading into conference play after this game, they will step out one more time at the end of January in the SEC Big 12 Challenge as they will take on Texas. Shaka Smart's got himself a really talented team this year, so that'll be a very challenging game for Kentucky. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. Now, nobody nobody in Big Blue Nation's looking for a moral victory today. They want to walk out of Louisville with a W. Absolutely. You, know, you mentioned Texas. Quick Brown had a great game against Oklahoma State in a big win. And certainly, Shock has got a team, a veteran team, and they're going to be tough. Foul well, on Kentucky's number 10, Dayon Hansen, second team, second Cardinal basketball. Got a push going against 
uh, Kentucky as you look at the non-conference schedule for the Wildcats an easy win in their first win of the game over Moorhead State but then the five consecutive losses granted two of them close but all losses nonetheless the game today against the Cardinals and then the one we just talked about against Texas came back from 24 and down against Notre Dame and a travel is the call on Samuel Williamson. Louisville cannot get untracked here in the opening minutes of the second half. Yeah, really sloppy play right there. Chris, you did a great job at Xavier. By the way, Xavier's doing a tremendous job right now, Coach Steele. I think they're late one. They lost a heartbreaker to Creighton. Kid Paul Scruggs playing really great for Xavier. The Musketeers, excellent program. If they like to pack it in, Louisville. They're not going to pressure you. They're going to pack it in. Make it tough for you to drive. Oh, that's a sloppy turnover. No, no reason for that turnover. Askey gives it right to Davis, and Dre Davis, the freshman out of Indianapolis, will take it the rest of the way. His brother's a heck of a prospect, and he committed to Louisville. Yep, Tay Davis, who will be part of the class of 2022, and now Louisville stepping up again at the defensive end. Lob over the top. Oh, Jackson pass. read it well and comes up with the steal. And at the other end, the lay-in will go for yeah. Mintz. So that's three times already this half where Kentucky has turned defense into offense. Yeah, their defense has certainly given them an offensive lift. Jones keeps the dribble alive. Slazinski open in the oh, corner for three. Got a good look right there, squared his body and shoulders to the basket. Shot in control. Slazinski didn't get a whole lot of minutes last year. Taking advantage of some playing time here. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Just the third three and 18 attempts on the season for Quinn Slazinski. But it's a big one as it brings Louisville back within one. Welcome back and happy holidays. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, led by uh, our guys who are in Louisville right now, our director, Scott Johnson, our producer, Bart Fox, who Dickie Butte celebrating a birthday today. Not only is it the holidays, it's also Bart Fox's <laughs> birthday today, so happy birthday to Bart. And I know, Dick, you are always wow. in the holiday spirit. <laughs> well, let me just say this. You know, you talk about John Calipari. We know he's a great coach. He's in the Hall of Fame. But he's also a guy that really cares about the community. He does an amazing job teaching his players values that are important. For example, at Christmas, he raises a lot of gifts, and he goes gets gifts from all the businesses in town, and then has his players pass them out to people in need. And I think it's great. Now, this year they couldn't do it go hand in hand because of COVID-19, but the people came down and picked up gifts down there where they had them available. I think that's great. Yesterday he had seven players on his house. Uh, players had their parents here. He let them be with their parents, but those that did not, he brought them to his house with his beautiful wife and family and really made sure they had a nice Christmas time. Well, this year, maybe more than any other, uh, any gesture, no matter how small, could mean so much to people over the holidays as John Calipari has a little talk with Jackson about that post move that went for an offensive foul. Jackson's done some great things early in the second half, but turned it over on the charge right there. He's been very athletic, and we know that about him. He's an elite athlete. Speed, quickness, jumping ability. And now an illegal screen going against wow. Louisville to turn it right back four. over. AJ Trainer, that's his second team third. AJ Trainer called for the foul, his second. You know, Chris Mayer. Mac cannot be happy when he see it on the floor right now. John Calipari, 11 and 2 against Louisville as the Kentucky head coach. The Cats have won three in a row overall. But seven of the last eight times against uh, Louisville. Chris Mack said he should have had last year. Up three with yep. about a minute to go. Up and rub. Yep. And got away three, from us. Three in a row overall in this series, I'm speaking of, between Kentucky and Louisville. A Wildcat turnover now. Now the Cardinals back looking for the lead. Scooped up no good by Jones. And a battle between a trainer and Boston. And it'll be a held ball. You know, you mentioned Jake trainer. Is, his yep. father, Dan, Jason Osborne, he played two years at Louisville as a McDonald's All-American.
Welcome back. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Kentucky by one. And a reminder, we've got an American Conference college basketball doubleheader coming your way Tuesday night on ESPN2 and on the app. It'll be South Florida taking on Memphis at seven. And then Houston, the number six ranked team of the nation at Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane have won three in a row. That is nine o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Kelvin Sampson's done a great job with that Houston program. They get Grimes transferred out of Kansas. has been big for them. They're in a battle right now, though, for the last time I looked with South Florida, who's an improved team. Central Florida, I'm sorry, of Central Florida, who had a big win over Johnny Dawkins kids, had a big win over Florida State, gave them their first loss. Number 12, J.J. Trainer, that's his third team four. Foul on J.J. Trainer of Louisville. And Dick, that's his third. He becomes the first player on either side to pick up his third foul today. You know, he's being off the bench for that. He had some good moments against Seton Hall. Made a big basket late in the game. They won that by one over Kevin Willard, who's to be an assistant to Rick Pitino there. He's a freshman from Bardstown, Kentucky. Two-time All-State in high school. Nice rebound by Dre Davis. We haven't said Samuel Williamson's name a lot. Coming off a double-double against Pitt and had a great first game of the season against Evansville. He is on the bench right now. He's only got two points today. He's a guy that, from a Louisville perspective, you'd like to see in their 30-plus minutes. Really putting up some big numbers for him McDonald's All-American. Yeah, Williamson and also Johnson. They're two guys that have been around the block and certainly are guys that can really help them. Back in the game for Kentucky number 20. Yeah, Chris Mack was telling us how the sophomores are the veterans on this team. I mean, they had so many players from last year. Jordan Wara, Fresh Kimball, Darius Perry, Stephen Enoch, Dwayne Sutton, and your guy Ryan McMahon. All of those guys are gone. It, it's not quite as brand new of a team as Kentucky is, but it's pretty close. Oh, yeah, it really is, especially when they got those injuries. Happened to certainly Malik going down. Williams, he's been 6'11 player, a defensive player. Ryan McMahon gave him that three-point shooter, man. He was lethal when he would get on fire. There is not one player in this game today who scored a point in this game last year between Louisville and Kentucky. Well, you know, Kentucky, it's a way of life. They simply... Yes. Reload every year, personnel wise. It'll be the same next year. They got three players charted to be NBA first round draft choices. Kids are drafted on potential athleticism, not on what they achieve and accomplish. As you look at the what's happening with Boston and, and certainly with the. Uh, uh, Clark with a pass fake, trying to get inside. Soft off the window, but it won't go. Jackson runs it down. Nice pass for Jackson. You know, Boston and Clark have not produced, and when you look with your eyes and say, well, you know, it's early in their career, to say, wow, they're big time first round draft choices. I haven't played like that. When I think of some of the greats that Kentucky's had over the years, I mean, it's unbelievable. Start with Anthony Davis. In fact, if I had to give you that, I'd give you six guys. My super six mentally Kentucky guys that I like during the Calipari era, Calipari era. I'll tell you this, Anthony Davis, John Wall, Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, DeMarcus Cousins, Carl Anthony Towns, and I love the little guy when he played, Tyler Eulis. I mean, those are my six favorite. And they, I don't even have Booker in there yet, because Booker did not, when you played at Kentucky, he was coming off the bench. How about David Johnson with a strong drive? So Jackson picks up his third foul, goes to the bench for the Cats, and then Johnson with a layup to put Louisville back on top. Well, he's a guy that Chris Max has got to give his productivity. He's got to be more consistent as a player. Chris was the ideal hire, by the way, when they had the situation of looking for a coach in Louisville. He was the perfect guy. Ask you can't get by Johnson. Toppin a little bit strong on the jumper. Where on the offensive glass. But can't finish it, and Withers wraps it up for Louisville. One thing about Weir, though, very physical and very aggressive. Louisville, by the way, has won 12 in a row at home. Will they get number 13? Carly oh, Jones God. gets to the rim. Back-to-back -back layups for the Cardinals. See, this is what I talked about earlier. Kentucky goes through moments when they break down. Nobody rotated over. Nobody cut off the drive-in lane. And Carly went right to the goal, left hand for a layup. And certainly has had to bring a smile to the face of Mr. Mack. It has been the guards here in the last minute or so. First, David Johnson, the high scorer in the game. 
with a right-handed layup, and then a Carleek Jones, who can hurt you so many different ways with the left-handed layup to extend the lead to three. You know, the most dangerous thing on the floor, Dan, is the basketball. And players from the help side got to come over and close off those driving angles. Not just stand there and watch as a guy goes in. You know, he beats one guy, he's fine. But when you beat everybody, that's no, no, man, in the half-court defense. How about that Carly Jones is from Cincinnati, Dick? And, of course, Chris Mack was the coach at Xavier. And when Carly was a kid, he went to Chris Mack's basketball camps. When Mac was there, so Mac may not have remembered Harleek the kid, but Harleek remembered Chris Mac. Well, I'll tell you one thing: it doesn't hurt to have that kind of advantage in recruiting when it's time to recruit a kid. I mean, that gives you familiarity. One thing you don't have to worry about when you talk about certainly John Calipari though is recruiting. I mean, they're, they're still got blue chip kids coming in next year. The question is now, I say. You can't just win with the one and done unless they're Anthony Davis, Zion Williamson, and they're once in a generation player. You're going to have some veteran players who yeah. contribute. And what really has disappointed me is seeing the performance thus far this year on Olivier Czar, because I was expecting greatness from him. I thought he was the final piece that they needed with their package after recruiting that great class. Mince gets inside and draws the foul. Kentucky's scoreless drought is four minutes and 47 seconds right now, but Amins has a chance to end that as he goes to the free throw line. Introducing Taco Gifter by Taco Bell, a service that lets you gift a taco for any reason or no reason at all. Number two on Jalen Withers, and Amins, the grad transfer from Creighton heading to the line now for Kentucky he's a guy Dick who should give them stability and maturity and experience at the point I, again put up some very nice numbers as Ware goes out and Saar comes back into the game now for the Cats yeah you would expect I agree with you Dan Saar and Mintz are veteran players they played in intense competitive basketball I mean, played at Creighton. You look at Mintz, Czar over at Wake Forest, as you said earlier, made the second team all ACC team. I mean, we're not seeing that out of them. We, we could say kids, the kids. The problem with Kentucky is they need their freshmen to be the stars. Look at those numbers. I mean, he had zero field goals against uh, North Carolina. 19 minutes, got in foul trouble. So he's gone better than three halves of basketball now without making a field goal. That's hard to believe when you yeah. watched them play last year. Ware with a block, and then Williamson trying to make something happen. Gets called for the foul. Tell you one thing, Ware and Toppin are earning some playing time. And certainly uh, Jackson 10, got back Williams being Jackson. Jackson. Second team six, Kentucky basketball. I'll tell you one thing, you can look on the records, it's still Kentucky and Louisville. When I hear that, I get goosebumps. Are you kidding me? Thinking about all the greats that have worn those uniforms, all the winning that's gone on. Two very proud elite programs. Yeah, this year is obviously different. There are only 3,000 people in the building, and you and I are in our homes. We're not even at the arena, but in a non-COVID year, Dick, and you've done this game, you and I have done this game together, to walk into the KFC Yum Center or to walk into Rupp, the day of this game. Man, the electricity is something else. Their guards can really go. Back to Dan and Dick in Louisville. All right, guys, thank you. So while we were away, the officials went to the monitor and looked at that last foul on Olivier Saar, and a flagrant one has been assessed. As we take another look, he's trying to post up on trainer and got oh. the right elbow right up in the jaw of Withers rather not trainer of Withers and Sar called for the flagrant one. Well, that's a good call right there. There's no doubt about it. I think just a bunch of frustration building up because Olivier is a great young guy. Everybody raves about him. You can talk about any coaches, Danny Manning, right down the line that had him. He's just frustrated. I mean, think about it. You said it, Dan, earlier. Three halves now without a field goal. North Carolina and this game. It's, it's, it's hard to believe that. It's hard to believe it. I'll tell you that because he's too talented, too skilled. They got to give him the ball more down in the post. 11.47 to go in the second half from the KFC Yum Center. Dan Schulman 
Dick Vitale, Kentucky, and Louisville, a flagrant one on Olivier Saar. And again, a limited number of fans, about 15% capacity of the Yum Center this afternoon. And it'll be Withers to the line for a couple of free throws after that flagrant one on Saar. There's a redshirt freshman out of Charlotte. And uh, the cousin of uh, a great Louisville defensive back and now an all-pro with the Green Bay Packers, Jair Alexander, who is his cousin of his. Well, I'll tell you one thing, his dad. His dad was a big-time scorer in Charlotte. I mean, three years dominated when he played out there. So he comes from some good, good genes. Hey, the last time, you know, think about this. Kentucky, seventh straight year last year with 25 wins. Will they get the eighth? That's going to be tough. They've had 26 straight 20-win seasons. I mean, John Calabrese done an amazing job there. He lost four players, average double figures last year quickly. Richards, Maxey, uh, Higgins. Lost Montgomery and Sestina as well. So he just reloads, as he always does. And a block is called there. If it's Sar, it's his third. And you made the point, Dick, that the SEC right now only has two ranked teams, right? Tennessee and Missouri. The, the Tigers off to a great start this year. So there aren't that many challenges. Yeah, there are good wins out there, but there aren't that many opportunities for Kentucky to pick up really noteworthy wins the rest of the way. Well, that's why we said the game like this game and a non-conference game with Texas becomes big to them because their goal is NCAA March Madness. They're not playing to get in the NIT. That's their goal this year. That's why this game is a must. they got to walk out of here psychologically with a win. A loss here six straight really, I think, is devastating. Jones with a beautiful feed to Withers for the lay and the lead grows for Louisville. You know, great execution right there. Very efficient, Chris Max club. They get the inside layup. Nobody challenges them on the shot. Simple dunk. I always tell you, I tell you early in the telecast, Kentucky has a problem that they go through spurts where they're so deficient, shot selection and deficient or defensively. And Boston misses three. the three. He is not shooting it well at all from the outside here in his freshman season. Nickelberry at the other end can't get it to go. And a foul called on Williamson. That'll be his third. You know, I didn't think Nickelberry uh, should have shot that shot. I thought he should have a little more patient right now. You got about a little bit on a rope right here. Look at the top one. Nobody rotates over there. Got to go to the basketball, people. Help side, you got to go to the basketball. Nickelberry gave them a little lift here. Should have been a little bit more patient, a little more poise with the team. And maybe going to let to points. And in the first half, Dick, neither team got close to the bonus. There were hardly any free throw shot. Now already this half, Louisville's committed seven. Kentucky's committed six. And we're not even halfway through the second half. So the free throw line is going to be important down the stretch. Well, John told us yesterday on the phone, Christmas Day, we're on the phone talking with John Calipari, and he said, we got to close games out. We can't just play people close. There's no moral victory here. you got to leave with a double. And Louisville has, in their minds, they feel they got to leave with a double. Yeah. So let's see who wants it more in the last 10 minutes. Mins one of two, a game-high 13. David Johnson leading Louisville with 12. Harley Jones, nine points, four rebounds as he brings him into the front court. And gets it to go over the length of Kentucky. And he's into double figures now. You know what I like about his game? He understands what a good shot is. Very mature as a player. I mean, that's a high percentage shot. He's under control as he goes in the lane. He's not flying wild. I mean, right now, you've got two guys rated to be lottery selections, basically, in Boston and Clark. And you look at their numbers, there's nowhere near where people would anticipate and expect them to be. And Clark, uh, in fairness, playing with a bit of a, a tender ankle. He rolled it a couple of weeks ago, has not been 100%, did not start today, has played, but has not scored today. Yeah, you're right about that. In fairness to the kid, he did have an ankle injury. So they're without a full strength Clark. They're without Cameron Fletcher, suspended from the team, at least for the moment. You can see Clark is on the floor right now. And Louisville shorthanded as well. Neither team is complete right now. And you can see that both are kind of struggling to find their way at the moment. 
Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. If Louisville gets back Malik Williams at the end of January, 6'11", and they get Charles Midland, because I'm telling you, Dan, I had him in that game against Gonzaga, and Midland was a big-time player. Williams, by the way, is the captain of the team two years in a row. He's a leader, a defensive player, closes up the lane for you. And I'll tell you, Midland is a scorer. I had him in San Francisco against Gonzaga in their championship with Bob Schusen, and we were impressed. I don't remember exactly the totals, but I guarantee you he was about 20 in that game in a tough loss to the Zags. Who, by the way, today plays Virginia. Talk about contrasting styles. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> a good look by Jones. But Dre Davis can't knock down the three. And down with the rebound, Jacob Toppin, who gave the Cats some good minutes in the first half. 6.6 .6 rebounds now for Toppin as he gets a touch of the post. Got a mismatch, kicks it out. And Kentucky still cannot buy one from beyond the arc. They're now 3 for 13. Transition, bucket for Louisville at the other end. Stop the ball, stop the ball. It's the first rule. Defensively in transition. Can't go up and down the floor like that, like a fast break drill in practice. That's a no-no, man. It's getting danger time right now for Kentucky. Williamson from Johnson, the fourth assist of the afternoon for David Johnson. Boy, do they need a bucket right here. Toppin's going to try to give it to him, and he will. I'll tell you one thing, Dan, he has really been effective today. He's a kid that they were thinking about redshirting this year, but they decided they needed him. Plus, he gets that year eligibility because everybody gets a year this year. Topping off the bench with eight points and six rebounds for Kentucky. No yeah, he and Weir Johnson been, is fouled. He and Weir have been uh, productive on Kentucky's that bench. Number 55. You know, in fairness 13, to Chris Mann as well, Dan, is the COVID-19 really has hurt his club. I mean, they were out for a, they had a pause as the layup right now. Jackson transition. Back, they had that pause. Ball. They were out once in 18 days. They didn't have a game until they had to go play Wisconsin and play a Wisconsin, a veteran team, average about 23 years of age, but they're good. Forget about the age. They just know how to play Potter and Trice and okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see in the ACC this year. I think we're still learning about a lot of these teams, how good they are. What will Louisville be? What will Syracuse be? You know, teams like NC State, Miami, can they jump up from the middle of the league and get up into the top part of the league? We'll find out a lot more as conference play gets going here in the next several days. You know, Notre Dame last year was over 500 in the ACC. They're 11 and 10 if you count the win in the ACC tournament. They get ready to play the pandemic hit Virginia. And you would expect them to be a lot better than what they've played thus far. A veteran team. Now they got the kid works in their lineup. I think Mike Brings Club's capable of getting some quality wins. Top it again. Turnaround jumper. Got it. Are you, are you serious? They said this kid's a year or two away. It's, he's contributing right now. He's a little mini version right now of his brother Obi. I, I don't mean he's Obi, Obi, but the bottom line is he's got great athleticism, and you can't teach that. The zone Kentucky right here is the zone. zone. Yep, there's the zone. Very active. Two, three. He said to play some zone. Davis with a good look from the corner. Misses the three. Oh. Offensive rebound. Johnson. Back up and in. And a foul. What a great play by David Johnson. You expect veteran players to step up. What did Chris Mack tell us yesterday, Dan? He said, I, when I said to him, I got a feeling you're going to see some zone. What did he say? He said, I welcome the zone. And he is getting a big time performance from Johnson. Look at how excited the bench was. The sophomores got 16 points, seven rebounds, and four assists already in this game. Well, you expect that from him. Their strength has got to be the perimeter gang right now. Carly yeah. Jones and Johnson. Johnson had that breakout game last year. Mention his name to Mike Krzyzewski. What he did down there at Duke was unbelievable. I think it was his first start, wasn't it, not Dan? I think game? it was. And he went for 19 and seven assists in that game down at Cameron. It is a seven-point lead for the Cardinals with eight minutes left in regulation. Couple breakdowns defensively by Kentucky allowing him. Now you get a little scared here about shot selection. Now you gotta have a kid like Mitch, the veteran, to take over with the team to understand what a good shot is.
Indiana and the Irish in the Rose Bowl, Clemson and Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl. And the winners, of course, will play for the national championship Monday, January the 11th. I know one thing, Dan. I know one thing, but Notre Dame's going to win. And that is the fight song. Cheer, <laughs> cheer for our own Notre Dame. Wake up the echoes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Man, I make Dinkus sound good. They said that he was, but he said, take me out to the ball game yeah. and do a good job. I made him sound like Pavarotti. After you, know I did it. you know we're on the air now, Dick, right? <laughs> you, know, you, <laughs> you know people can hear you. <laughs> uh, to Isaiah Jackson to the bench with four for Kentucky. Oh. Ask you, but the floater won't go. And we got a foul. Uh, as they're getting after it, rebounding. I think it's against uh, Louisville. Ask you to do a good shot there. He's, he's really, to me, he's improving. You know, they and keep saying that, you know, he reclassified. What people yeah, fail to one say. One. That's his normal class because as an eighth grader, he was kept for the extra year to get a little bit more maturity. So really, when they said reclassified, you know, he did. But in essence, that really was the class that he would have been part of. Top and a miss is the front end of the one and one. And it'll be Louisville ball. That's been a problem in close games for Kentucky. The free throw line against Carolina and also against uh, Richmond. You can see the frustration on John's face. The guy's a winner, man. The guy is a competitor, a fierce winner. In the second half, Dick, Kentucky is 5 for 14. They haven't made a three, and they've turned it over six times. They turned it over five times in the first half, six times already here in the second half. Now a Louisville turnover. Oh. And the third opportunity will oh, finally go down for the Cats, a much-needed bucket. That was absolutely needed. Their defense has really helped them offensively in this game. I mean, their offense has been really a struggle city, yeah. but their defense has led to some good transition layups. Yeah, Boston with the bucket. He's now got seven, and offense has been the bigger problem for Kentucky so far this young season. Inside well, seven minutes to go. Jones nearly turned it over, and he did. You don't expect that out of the veteran. You know, when you turn the ball over, you don't chew well. That's a formula for failure. Top end with a miss, Louisville ball. That one thing, those 3,000 fans are getting loud down there, Danny Schumann. Yeah. Can you hear him yeah. in Toronto? I can hear him a little bit up here in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Johnson stumbling, lost his balance, loose ball to Slazinski. And a fresh possession now for the Cardinals. Well, they're coming up with the 50-50 ball. And that always is a difference maker in a close game. Having a guy like Jones should be a big edge for Kentucky coming down the stretch. And a move Gets inside and lays it in again. Jones and Johnson, the backcourt for the Cardinals, have controlled the second half of this game. Are we talking about the top of the show? And that backcourt could be special. And they're going to get better and better as they're more familiar with each other. Yeah, those two guards did get combined for 30 of Louisville's 52 points. I'm telling you, you put Midland and Malik Williams with this team, mm -hmm. this team could be a heavyweight team. I agree with you. They're, they're one of these teams we could look up in February and say, boy, did they get good. They're, they're just going to get healthier and healthier over the course of the year. Mints for three to bring them back within four. Tell the veteran player, Mintz from Creighton, has been a real plus here. And you expect that from him. Now if he can get his other buddy, Zar, to start to contribute. Sitting in that zone now. And Jones seeking no out the contact. Foul. No basket fouled before the shot. Foul on Kentucky's number two, Devin Askew. That's his first. Boy, when he wants to get inside, Dick, he just carves out a path and finds a way to do it. Yeah, he really does. And the line will be number one, Carly Jones. Big three by Creighton. Former player. Creighton, boy, they got a good basketball team. Had a real tough win over Xavier. Former team of Chris Mack. Xavier 8-1. and one. Paul Scruggs, outstanding. Coach Steele doing a great job with the Musketeers. Jones at the line for the Cardinals. 
See, I think it's a big plus to have when you get the winning time, the last five minutes, to have a veteran player with the stability, the maturity of a guy like Carly Jones. You're not winning big in college basketball without great point guard play. And Kentucky over the years has had that with John Walls, with Teagues. You think about the Aaron Foxes. The list goes on and on of great point guards that have had Bledsoe. I mean, where does it end? And they think so much of him in the Louisville program, even though he is new to Louisville. Yes, he's a veteran guy, a grad transfer, but he's new to Louisville, but he is one of the co-captains on the team. That's the kind of impact that he has had on a lot of the newcomers. I'll tell you one thing, Kenny Klein and Eric Lindsay do a great job. Can't thank them enough for all the material they have given us in preparing, especially not being at the arena. Eric and Kenny Klein, this Kenny. There's Kenny. Yeah. They are so underpaid. I've said this from day one. The SIDs work so hard. The hours they put in. They should get raises, man. <laughs> Yeah, they, they send us the game notes. They answer whatever questions we have. They set up the Zoom calls with the coaches. They text us information during the games if anybody's got a, a new season or career high. Do a tremendous job. Free throw line. Missed the first one. You're down six. Less than five. You've got to convert. One of two for Saar, and it's a five-point game with less than five minutes to go. A little pressure here on the ball right now. And oh, Louisville weak. gets out of it. And the finish at the other end for Withers. That's exactly the way you want to attack it, Dan. You go diagonal, get the ball away from the trapping area. And they did a clinic right there after the initial ball was bobbled. How about Mintz with his 4-3 of the game? He's doing all he can, keeping the Cats right there. Kentucky's number 10, Tavion Mintz, that's his third 10-team foul. That puts the Cardinals into the moment. Look at a diagonal pass. The guy Cardinals in the box, and there's the layup. Carly Jones. Boy, that was beautiful He'll from Davis. Shoot, shoot. He got rid of the ball in a heartbeat. And then Davion Mintz, his four threes, now got a game-high 19 points. But another foul, He's this one on Mintz, it's his third, and Jones is back at the free throw line for Louisville. 23, Isaiah Jackson back in for Kentucky as well as Jackson number two. Jones for the Cats. Jones is such a complete player. He's missed the versatility, rebounds, assists, scores, scores on the drive, scores in the open three. Just a total player, and he's so team oriented everything he does is within the team concept doesn't take a lot of wild bad shots big south player of the year last year stepping up to the acc and putting up big numbers for the cardinals one of two there and the lead is five each possession gets bigger and bigger as the clock winds down for kentucky who needs this win badly boston steps in it won't go battling for the rebound and a foul he did a great job right there, Boston, coming up with the offensive rebound. He showed his athleticism right there with that up and under that he tried. Rated very high. Played at Sierra Canyon High School. Played with a great player there. Zaire Williams was a star out at Stanford. Well, it's been a quiet afternoon, though, for Boston, wouldn't you say, Dick? Seven points, six rebounds, and, and pretty quietly putting up uh, those numbers. They need more from that, and, and he is certainly capable of much more than that. And Clark is much more capable, like you said, though, Dan. The ankle, we don't know how, you know, how much that really hurts the kid right now in terms of his mobility. Tell you one thing, John Calipari and his staff work so hard. The guys, you know, every staff, I guess we could say about it all, but they're in a pressure cooker. I mean, let's say Kentucky, you don't win in Kentucky. It's like really such a sad, sad time. And people really take it hard. Big Blue Nation fans care, really care. It's such pride. Those jerseys their represent their over greatness. Moorhead State. They have lost five in a row since. All the power conference teams, and they're down by three inside four minutes to go in Louisville. Not going to get easier either. They're going on a road to play a week from now against Mississippi State. But Jackson got a piece of it. Out of the bounds to the Wildcats. And the under four media timeout is upon us. It's going right down into the closing minutes. Kentucky in desperate need of a win of a trailing Louisville at the Yum Center.
All right, guys, thank you. 344 to go. And to use a cliche, it looks like Dickett's going right down to the wire with the KFC Yum Center. The 1 and 5 Wildcats, the 5 and 1 Cardinals, both trying to here have a win the day after Christmas and enjoy the holidays a little bit more. I'll tell you one thing, Dallin, Jordan, and Seth working in that studio, man, working hard. I'll tell you one thing, Johnny Dawkins Club, UCF, they just talked about the game in Houston. They gave Florida State their first L, guys, their first L. Will they do it and give Mr. Sampson his first L? There have been some good games, you know. I mean, you know, not every game has been played, obviously, and it's there's been some turbulence so far this season, but there has been... Uh, a lot of good basketball, a lot of really fun games that have gone down to the wire in the first few weeks of the season. Yeah, COVID 19's caused a nightmare, obviously, for some, but we still at least got some good basketball. Oh, good offensive rebound. Isaiah oh! Jackson. Isaiah Jackson following up his own miss and slamming it home to make it a one point game. Well, he showed that the elite athletic athleticism he possesses. He's a great high riser. He showed earlier this year, he's getting rave, rave reviews, and then he went through a little slide. And now he seems back again because he's been very productive here this afternoon. This game is big. These three minutes are so big to John Calipari and his basketball team. They're big to Louisville as well. Oh, oh Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is in the house. There he is. Mr. Jones, a little basketball. He wants to play some hoops. Carly Jones banking it home with a shot clock running down to make it a three-point lead. Well, he is under control at all times, isn't he? Boston, no. He got fouled. But a foul. The 11 and 18, Dan, on the free throw line. Comes big. Will they make clutch free throws? Watch him. Isaiah. Here comes Isaiah. He's a high riser, baby. Up, up, and away. Mr. Jones says, I just want to snoo Jay off the glass. You know, he's something, Dick. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's not the fastest guy in the world. But he gets where he wants to get, Carly Jones. Looks like we got ourselves one that's going to come right down to the... Buzzer. Oh, I thought you were going Maylock Smasher on me there. I was feeling Yeah, Maylock you're going Maylock Smasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of people in Kentucky. I can guarantee you right now, chewing yeah. that Maylock. They're <laughs> chewing it. They need a W. This would be the best Christmas present that Mr. Calabari could get if he could get a win here. And Mr. Max says, for me, it would be my best as well. As we said off the top of the show, throw out the records. One of the best rivalries in college basketball. And again, especially in the first half, not a masterpiece offensively, but it is close. It is important. And it's going into the last couple of minutes in a one-point game. It's very intense. There's no doubt about it. Oh. Jones leans in, doesn't get it. Offensive rebound. And Dan Withers, a shot clock violation is the call. And it's going to go back over to Kentucky. Very surprised there with a kid like Jones. Ended up taking a bad shot because he left his feet. Here we go. Can the Cats take the lead? Making sure they get a good shot is vital. Shot selection when you get to this time of the game is so important. Jackson, no. Loose ball. Kentucky ball. Well, and now, since it's Kentucky. in the last two minutes, they're going to go have a look at this one, Dick. Yeah, we can't tell from where we're at, but the bottom line, you're in Canada and I'm here. That should be Louisville Ooh. ball, right? That's off should the left Louisville, hand of Mintz, yeah. it looks like. Looks, looks like Mintz hit with his left hand. Yeah. I can see it with one eye from here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Out of Wow. That is Mintz reaching for the ball and sure looks like he was the last one. He, he touched it right there and I don't I think he was the last I, one. Yeah. I don't see anybody else. I think it's an easy call. Well, just we got what we expected. The game to go to the wide was not smooth, was not efficient. Was the kind of basketball that these schools over the years have normally played, but it's certainly intense and competitive. Chris Mack trying to go six and one. John Calabari trying to eliminate goal one and six. 
One and five, the worst start for the Wildcats since 1926 27. All the losses to power conference teams, but still, but both of these teams really hunting a win here today. Louisville ball with just over a minute and a half to go and a one point lead. Patience really important. Understanding the right people to shoot. Dre Davis feeds it inside. And a travel is the call on Withers. It goes back over to Kentucky. Yeah, he lifted his pivot foot. There was no doubt about it. It was pretty good execution right there. Looked like they were in position to get a layup. Well, John Calipari said we got to finish games. We've been close. They were close with Kansas, could not finish. They were really close to Carolina until Carolina broke it open late. Boston misses the jumper. Jackson with a rebound. It won't stay down, but he's fouled. Tell you one thing, is he quick to the ball, Dan? You see the way he bounces like a Spalding ball years ago. A ball just a bounce like crazy. He bounces off the floor like that. Jackson with some big, big moments in the second half at both ends of the floor for Kentucky. And now he's got a chance to give them the lead. He is two for two from the line today. He has really been effective, boy, around that basket. I thought that block shot he had earlier in the game that led to a transition slam dunk was big. Free throw line, Dan. That's been a problem. The Richmond game. They really shot poorly in that close game with Richmond. American Conference doubleheader Tuesday night on ESPN2 and on the ESPN app. South Florida taking on Memphis, and then it'll be Houston and Tulsa. A couple of good games coming your way on Tuesday night. Well, Houston, number six in the country, will they be undefeated at that game in a battle right now? Pressure from Kentucky in what is now a tie game. I got nowhere to go. Oh, they will move overtime. <laughs> it's early this afternoon. You know it's going to be Jones making the key decisions on this possession. He hands it off to Johnson. Johnson in all kinds of traffic. He, Good cut. Out of and Davis is fouled. No, out you're right. Out of, out of bounds. Out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He stepped on the line. You got to know where you are. You got to know the landscape of the court. Come on. You got to know the landscape of the floor. He's out of bounds. Right Absolutely. Kentucky. A and a timeout taken by John Calipari. They have come back here in the last couple of minutes, and now they've got the ball and a chance to take the lead in the final minute of regulation. You know, Dan, Chris Mack cannot be happy the way they've been executing the last few possessions. Yeah, Dick, this is last year. Stephen Enoch with a big bucket at Rupp Arena. In a game that went back and forth, Nick Richards answers in overtime with a minute 20 to give Kentucky the lead. Ashton Hagens with a steal and a dunk. And the Wildcats beat the Cardinals in an overtime in a game that Chris Mack said to us yesterday, quote, they should have won. They should have been able to finish it and come up with the win. They were in position, it felt like, Dick, to finish this one here today. But a couple of turnovers have put Kentucky in a pretty good spot right now. Yeah, really been sloppy down the stretch here. He said in that game last year, we were up three with about a minute to go and let it get away to go to overtime. But I'll tell you this, this will be a tough loss. Remember now, Kentucky has won seven of the last eight matchups for Louisville. Will it be eight out of nine? Oh. Now the thing, question John for, sorry, go ahead, Dick. No, John Calipari will not need that bus to take him back to Lexington if they win this game. <laughs> He'll sprint there. He'll sprint. It's been a long time since he felt the victory walking over, shaking the other coach's hand. And now the question is, can they get some good ball movement? Can they get a good high percentage look? Uh, Davion Mintz has been the man for them. He is leading them with 19 points. He's made four threes today. Boston and Toppin are also in double figures. And Toppin is in the game right now. Jackson came back out. Again, Olivier Saar basically a non-factor today. One point, one rebound. They have turned to other people. Saar's on the bench. They have turned to others for offense for the second game in a row. And let's see what kind of a shot they get. Got to watch the offensive rebound as well. That's where Kentucky's hurt a little bit in Louisville. And a this shot. Inside 10 to shoot. It'll be Askew for three. Short. 
And it belongs to Louisville. And a foul is called on the loose ball. A Kentucky foul, and if it's Jackson, he is done. That's his fifth personal. Not a smart play. He's 70 feet from the basket. 70 feet. Not a good play right there. Boy, a low percentage shot. Jackson out of the game, sending Louisville to the free throw line. Topping limping. That possession could not have gotten much worse for Kentucky. Well, you know, Jackson sticking his hand in there right from the referees. Can't do it. He's not doing anything. He stuck that hand in there. It's a shame because it's been such a big, big help here for Kentucky this afternoon. So the freshman, this. the freshman, Dre Davis, goes to the line. He has not shot free throws in this game today. He is at 74% on the season. He's got two coming. He's the son of a coach. His dad coaches high school out in the Indianapolis area. Wow. Misses the first. Wasn't close. Kentucky does have one timeout remaining. We'll see how John Calipari plays it. Got a block out here, too. One of two and a one point lead. Time it is Saar who has come back four. into the game for Jackson, who fouled out. And John Calipari, no, this is Chris Mack. My mistake. Chris Mack using the timeout here. His next to last. So Louisville with a one point lead. Kentucky ball with 18.9 seconds to go. Very similar in a way to the Notre Dame game. And it was Czar with a little baseline jump shot that hit the rim and bounced off. And I remember some of the text messages of Mike Bray. If you'd have lost that game, 24 point lead, I said, you got to go down to Grotto and do some praying down there at the Notre Dame campus. But I'll tell you this right now, 18 seconds. It would be amazing if Czar, who has not done a thing offensively the entire game, comes up with the big play. Yeah, most of the scoring has come from Davion Mintz with a, a game-high 19. And we'll see what John Calipari is drawing up for his team, which is in such a desperate need of a victory, trying to snap this five-game losing streak. You think his stomach is churning a little bit? He better believe it's churning. You don't want no moral victories. No, we played them close. We played them tough. They need wins. This is Kentucky basketball. He's had a few wins in his lifetime. Mr. Yeah, Denny Crum. the Hall Crum. of Famer. It's uh, Denny Crum Court at the KFC Yum Center as Coach Crum looks on. National champs, 1980-1986. Chris Mack so. wishes he had some of his players on that floor right now, like Griffin and that never nervous Purvis. I bet Here there, comes. there are a few nervous people in that in this building right now, aren't there? Yeah, shot selection is going to be big here now. Get the quality shot and watch the missed shot. The missed shot many times is so dangerous. Teams get a little relaxed and the offensive rebound becomes the difference maker. They're going to go a little full court pressure here, try to take some time off that clock. He's asking with the ball, the type of dandy. He's been fairly well here today. Sarb with a handoff. Gets it back. Baseline jumper. No! Oh! 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 The you know, same shot basically he had against Notre Dame. That one was in for the kid. That was in. They got a good shot. Still yeah. five seconds left. They got what they wanted. They got a good look. And it bounced around and it rolled around and it rolled off the rim for Sarb. Wow. You know what I take from this game right mm. now? I mean, you still got five seconds to play. I find it mind-boggling that Olivier Zarr has gone two games and not scored a field goal. Seven-footer who put big points on the board in a number of games last year for Wake Forest. Now, Dick, wow. now Dick, remember, this one's not over. Even if Jones no, makes both, seconds. it's a one-possession game, Absolutely. and there are five seconds left oh. on the clock. There's a lot could happen with five seconds. Carlick missed a free throw last time he was on a free throw line. If he makes this one, Dan, I don't allow, even though Kentucky's not a good three-point shooting team, I don't allow him to take the look at the three. You fouled. I fouled. Not right away, let him throw the ball in mass, take a second or two off the clock, and then foul. Let him make Because they're not really a good free throw shooting team. Each team with a timeout remaining. Yeah. 
Oh, that's both. big. Yeah. Timeout, Cardinals. That's the guy you want at the line if you're Chris Mack. So one last opportunity for Kentucky if they could somehow knock down a three and tie the game, but will Louisville even give them that opportunity? I know I win. I know a lot of coaches. That's two different philosophies, and I, I respect those that go the other way, so you just play tough defense. But I'm telling you, if I'm on that sideline, I don't like the percentages of what they've seemed to do in terms of shooting threes. I know Kentucky's not a good three-point shooting team, but something call a little magic, a little luck once in a while. Why take that chance? Let him throw it in, take a couple seconds off, foul him, put him on the line for two. And then block out. Yeah, that's the big one, right? <laughs> that, yeah, that's the count. important part. You got to do that part too. Uh, didn't it, didn't this happen last night in the uh, the Minnesota Iowa game, right? Marcus Carr hit a yep. three late to force overtime, and he went on to score 30 as the Absolutely. Gophers came up with a big win over the Hawkeyes. That was a big win. They're eight and one with Jupitino's kids. They beat St. Louis as well. He's having a great year under Travis Ford, a former Kentucky leader. Mark Polk doing a great job, former Kentucky player at BYU. He's not going to be Cupcake City for Gonzaga in that league. Anyway, let's see what goes on here. Try to match up. Top into inbounded for Kentucky. Nobody on the ball for Louisville. Five seconds to go. Where? Okay. He wants to give it to a shooter. They get a decent look. But it won't go down for Brandon Boston Jr. And Kentucky's losing streak is now at six. They fall to one and six on the season for the first time in over a century as Louisville picks up a three-point win at the KFC Yum Center. Very frustrating right now for John Calipari and Big Blue Nation losing this close game. They got a week off. They don't have the game with South Carolina. That's been postponed because of COVID. But they have a game with Mississippi State. A lot of frustration right now. I'm telling you, there was great expectations. Number one recruiting class and getting Olivier Zarr, who many felt would be the most impact fifth-year transfer. And it's just not happening. There's something missing. The execution of this team, shooting ability. You can take number one classes all you want. Got to start playing as a team, T-E-A-M. They just don't understand how to get good shots. They played a good game, though. They have a good they game, but it's not good win, enough. So you win at Papa John's. Get a free bread side. And jubilation for the Cardinals. The backcourt of Carly Jones and David Johnson leading the way with a combined 37 points on the afternoon as Louisville goes to 6-1 and one with a 62-59 win over Kentucky. For Dick Vitale, I'm Dan Schulman. Happy holidays. Thanks for watching. Louisville beats Kentucky. Let's send it back to the studio again along with Jordan and Coach. Here's Dallas.